the man who called more Bills Patriots games than anyone else in 2021. It is Charles Davis, the NFL on I CBS, joining that. that. Well, yeah. you and Ian, technically, that is true. right? Yes. So, I, Ian is the man. Let's make sure we have right. that down. And yeah. Evan Washburn, who was smart enough to find the chicken broth, that's I was right. Down there, yeah. On the playoff game, did you get into? Did I was you dive down, into I did it not too, get into the chicken broth. Lot, <laughs> that's not my thing. You're a lot tougher yeah. than he is. He's a, he's yeah, a chili no. guy. Right? I felt, yeah, I felt bad for Evan though, because I, I was on the sidelines too. You were down there too. I felt bad for his hair. Yes, but listen. But, if he would have run a finger through his hair, it would have snapped off. Would have snapped right off. Could have hit it with a hammer. Solid. I have to just tell you, for me, I'm just jealous. Well, right? I'm jealous. He too. has hair. Yes, and that's you know right. I'm wearing the yeah. ball cap, so this is that tells you all you yeah. need to know. It's the price you have to pay for. He had a lot of <laughs> he had a lot of product, and I don't know if he I don't know how long it took him to get it out. He was thaw out. Let's let's bust into this. Though. Yeah. Here at the combine, and and we're going to get into some of the scouts and stuff in a minute. Um, not a good quarterback class. Yeah, not 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 anywhere close to what and we saw last year. And it looks like, for the first time in maybe a handful of years, there's not going to be that many veteran quarterbacks out there moving around. Now we heard now Jimmy G probably on the move. That's what we would figure, right? Carson Wentz probably on shaky ground. But then again, I mean, the market's not there for Carson right now. I mean, he's but, not a hot commodity. But what's interesting to me about it, Steve, is that when your general manager and your head coach come to the combine, you watched him play all year. You gave up a number one pick. You let him play so the number one pick went through. And you get here and you go, well, we're still evaluating. I think you've told us something. What do you mean you're still evaluating? You either know you yeah. like him or you don't. Yeah. So that was a big I, one for me. I think that points toward, and we're going to have Frank Reich on, yeah. uh, points toward maybe some disagreement. That it certainly sounds like, plus it's $28 million. Yeah. So you're talking about a whole bunch of different things. <laughs> that's worth disagreeing that's over. A, that's, that's a I'll big I'll disagree one. over $28 million. <laughs> that's, we're going to have yeah. a discussion yeah. on that. Right, exactly. so, so you're right, though. How many veteran quarterbacks make their move? Jameis Winston, I think, is still out there. You know, he got hurt last year with New Orleans. Is there an opportunity there? Where does he, where does he end up settling in case someone wants a veteran quarterback? And we got a couple backup guys who might be in play as well. One of them in Buffalo, mm-hmm. named Mitchell Trubisky, who yes. wants to be a starter again. And how about Marcus Mariota with the Las Vegas Raiders? Does he right. get a second opportunity to be a starter somewhere in the NFL for a team? So you're right. Yeah. We've got to see what happens with the veterans. And the last thing I'll say is this quarterback crop of, of, of rookies this year, not like last year. Mm-mm. But right. at the same time, I also don't want to just say, well, there's, there's just no quarterbacks. Andy Dalton, second rounder. Brett Favre, second rounder. Yeah. Who knows? And, and maybe a veteran team takes one in the second round or first round that they can groom. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see how it all how plays about Davis out. Davis Mills last year didn't do a bad Listen, job. Fourth Davis, rounder. I'm just going to tell you right now, I said it last year. I'm on record. I hate revisionist history. One of the few things I said and I stood on the table for, if Davis Mills had stayed in school at Stanford last year, we would be talking about him being the first quarterback off mm. the board this year. Yeah. I, I was firmly well, convinced. Because you remember, he yeah. only had like 13, 14 starts right. Right. in college. Mm-hmm. If he had played through this year, We'd be talking about him being the top guy. Well, he's probably would be. He's probably pretty close to that this year anyway, yeah. uh, so. as he's earned himself a spot. I think Agreed. as the guy going forward for Houston has to be. Yeah. So, CD, the receiver position is chock full of talent again this year. This has come to be an assumed luxury every year in the draft yes. with the college game churning out a bounty of talent. Good receivers, as we know, will benefit any team. Yes. But for a team like Buffalo or Kansas City. Is it a force multiplier to help those teams widen the gap between them and other clubs because of who they have at quarterback? That's a great question, and, 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 and the reason that it hits so well with me is that's what Cincinnati did, although we didn't know that it was a force multiplier. Right. We were just wondering if that would make them better. Mm-hmm. We had no idea that Jamar Chase— instead of Panay Sewell, the offensive right, tackle, right. became the difference in them making that run down the stretch. Because you remember Jamar Chase started like gang fire, had a little lull in the middle, and then down the stretch it was up. a monster again. And now right. you add him to T. Higgins, to Tyler Boyd. Just saying, Tyler Boyd had been a perennial 1,000-yard receiver, mm-hmm. and now he's the third option yeah. right? because of because Chase, and, I, and here comes T. Higgins. So I agree with yeah. you totally on that, but I worry about where you're picking – well, in right. order to get that receiver to be the force multiplier. Because right. I don't have any of these guys that I look at like I looked at Jamar Chase last year. So it has right. to be an elite, you think, to be I, a force multiplier? Doesn't have to to be the... an, it doesn't have to be an elite, but if you really want to really stretch it out, an elite, with, an elite has to be a must. Otherwise, I can find that guy. Right. I can get other people. And by the way, Gabriel Davis is like, I'm stepping up, guys. And right. I'm a fourth rounder. Yeah, right. I'm doing okay. I don't want to, because we're going to talk about one thing, last thing I want to ask you about, on the flip it on the other side of the ball, the edge rushers, they're a little kind of neck deep at the top of this draft. I mean, they're they got some guys. Yeah. So if you're 
you're going to combat a guy like Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Russ Wilson, you know, uh, you know, Trevor, yep. go down the list, uh, Justin Herbert, Mahomes, yep. you need those guys. And uh, you started with that last year, right? right? Started with Greg Rousseau. Boogie Basham, I think, started to come on a little bit better as the season yep. went on. Um, you know, you look at this one, as you mentioned, look, Hutchinson and Kayvon Thibodeau from Oregon, they're, right. the, they're the kind of the top of the They're thing. not going to 25. They're not going to 25. Kenneth George Carfolitis out of, out of Purdue. Can he be down in that in that range there? I don't know. We're going to find out as we go along. But there's so many guys coming out. I cannot wait to see where it all ends up. Look, this J- Jermaine Johnson from Florida State, mm-hmm. he couldn't get on the field at Georgia because they were they so transferred. loaded. Right. He transferred, and he's the ACC Defensive Player of the Year, and then proved it at the Senior Bowl. He wasn't a flash in the pan. He was a legit dude. Can you get him down in that range? Yeah, right. I don't know. Looking at free agency, knowing it's going to be on us in a second as soon as we leave the combine. The combine's a week later with the schedule yeah. all pushed back. We're going to be like eight days away from free agency. From, a, from the people you talk to around the league, Charles, whether it's players, agents, whomever, what are you hearing about Buffalo now? as a free agent destination. Oh, it's a, it's a big time destination because you're going with guys go on to go where they're going to win. Yeah. Right. And Steve, I think can attest to this better than anyone. If you had wholesale free agency with your teams, like you had now, Oh yeah. How many guys would have been interested because number 12 is pulling the trigger. Yeah. Right? Right? Number I, 78 too. I can go can right. 78 is going to, 78 going to beat them up. Yeah. 12 is going to do it guys. on offense. And guess what? I've got a chance to go get a ring. It's a big deal, and that means more to these guys than anything. I don't care who you are. It's a big-time destiny. You've got 15 guys right now who are unrestricted free agents. Wouldn't be surprised at all that a good number of them are going to want to stay there. Look, Matt Milano last year. Right. I mean, think about what he did contract-wise because he wanted to be in Buffalo, and then he played at a Pro Bowl level even though he didn't get voted yeah, in. It's one it. thing. You can get on, the, get on the roster. It's another thing to make that squad. Yes. It's, it, you get to a point where now the Bills have got 16, 17 free agents. It's going to be question but there's yeah, they gotta room. make some decisions there's room for some people there you, you can step in and contribute so yeah absolutely and by the way josh allen yeah i'm interested in yeah Buffalo. right i yeah, figured right. as much last one i've got for you is what is the consensus you're hearing about bill's new offensive coordinator ken dorsey mm-hmm. known as a cerebral player in college and the pros super successful player in college by the way 38 and 2 is not too bad <laughs> that's not bad but <laughs> what might be his biggest challenge as a first time play caller First time play caller's biggest challenge is making sure he's in the same same spot with the head coach and what, what the head coach is looking for. Because mm-hmm. my read on Sean McDermott, he's a defensive guy, and he's not willing to, like, back off Josh Allen. He is actually a defensive guy who wants him to press it, but he sure as heck would like to see the football run more. Mm-hmm. I guarantee it. It'd be just, just yeah. a sense that I have, not that he wants it to be – balanced yeah but can we run it sometimes can we help our defense at different times can we run four minute drives when it's not four minutes required can we do so sorts of things he's going to want more of that so that's where he yeah. needs to just be on that same page with him and the last thing for him is he already has that great relationship with josh allen i had a coach in the league call me when he got elevated and say i've been telling you for three years people don't talk about this guy enough now he's getting his chance there you go yeah, yeah. Charles, thanks for the time. Good we know you got you, other obligations today. We appreciate you carving out a little niche hey, for thanks, us today. Thanks for having me. I'm just glad my obligations don't involve me going to court or anything. <laughs> like that. So I'm in good shape. Always great to see you good guys. See you you guys are the best. Thanks for having me on. All right. That's NFL on CBS's Charles Davis. 